Oh, this is easy, and I have this little script that you can try. I'll have a link below the video, and you can download it and try it. It's called the Easy Morph A version A script. Okay, this is not a plug-in, so you'll have to use a Z script and load it. If I upgrade it, I'll call it Easy Morph B. And I'm going to go over you some uh, tips here, and uh, everything's not written in stone. That means if it worked for me, it may not work for you. But I'm going to give you some pointers. Uh, one of the pointers is we have some buttons called Delete History here. And I've got a couple of these buttons that delete histories. And um, on the older versions of ZBrush, this was well known to crash. So in other words, make sure you have the newer version of ZBrush. So we won't have that happen. And all this script does is it uh, we're going to be using some morphs, okay? And for morph to work is, you can see here we have the active point and we have the total point. Uh, the active point is on the tool that we're selecting right now, which is in the cylinder. All right, once we get started, this cannot change any higher or any lower, or our morph will not work. So in other words, if we start going, and in the middle we change it by, let's say, subdividing it and adding more polygons, well, that's not going to work. We're going to end up losing our morph. All right, and the other thing is, this will also be using the project all button, and it will be actually on the script and actually uh, increasing the uh, project distance and increments, and it'll be going up. And it presses this button quite a bit. In other words, is uh, if you have a lot of polygons, it's going to be extremely slow. If you have very few polygons, which I have like 482 here, it will speed it up. Now through the video here, you may need to go full screen so you can kind of see what's going on here. And if I didn't know if I said this or not, but uh, I'll go over this part here. Uh, as you can see, the cylinder here is actually the larger object. This is what I'm going to start with. It needs to be larger than the one we are morphing it to, which would be the pyramid here. So always make sure that your object on the outside that you're starting with is larger than the one on the inside. And like I said, everything's not written in stone, but it seems to be working great this way. Okay, I'd pause the video and I'm going to give you just a kind of a rundown what's going to happen when you press this button. It's kind of really not important, but if you might want to know, I'm going to tell you before we even get started. So, as an example, if I start pressing this morph button or slider, uh, one of the things it's going to do, and we'll open up the morph palette target, it's going to automatically store the morph target here. Uh, the second thing is, it's automatically going to come over here and it's going to select the morph brush that we're going to be using later. Okay, keep that in mind. And as you can see, I have these two buttons here, and one's for the sub palette, one's for the morph target. And I just put these here because it's easy access. And the next thing is uh, what's going to happen is it's going to project all, and this is going to do it in increments. It's going to move this uh, distance slider up in increments. All right, they got different settings for different buttons and different sliders, so we'll keep that in mind. And, uh, how this works so we might want to keep this open and keep an eye on this so you can kind of see what's going on okay uh, I'll be pausing the video and doing this in steps so if you see any changes probably because I paused the video and uh, I noticed in my screen recording um, I do have some pop-ups when you click these buttons and it screws up my screen recorder and sometimes that you might not want to see these little pop-ups which they can be a little annoying but they're little notes just press skip note and they won't pop up in front of you under the Z script skip notes so when I press into these buttons or sliders you won't be able to see them so we're going to select here and click and it's going to go ahead and select the morph brush here and then it's going to start going up in increments alright it's very similar to the uh, pyramid here 
but not quite all right just like it says you may need to select this more than once all right it all depends so I'll do it again not quite let's do it again sometimes if you overdo it it'll end up screwing up even more so this is pretty much fairly what I want okay so we went from the cylinder to the pyramid and like I said we got these uh, buttons over here we can go to the sub palette or the uh, more palette to see what we got going here and this is actually the morph from cylinder if we switch the morph you can see how it switched here if we move more, more slider you can kind of see like this now I'm going to bring it back down in the middle and I'm going to drag down till it snaps to right in the middle that way I can automatically make sure that I'm going from one to the other because if you see too much it might morph from a different starting point and uh, since we have the morph brush here um, anytime that we can just bring back that cylinder just by using the morph brush um, not so exciting on the cylinder and the pyramid but I'll try it on something else so you can kind of see it a little bit better alright of course now we have no morph because uh, when we switch because I switched it all the way back and you can scroll through here to find out where the areas that where you want to stop at alright alright this button here this is going to delete the history from where it's at okay this is my starting point right here and I want to switch here to here so if I press here deletes all my history and I can have this right here Let's go ahead and load this up one more time. And I'll show you something else here. So if I started morphing it here. Alright, then we have this restart. It's something similar to this. Um, but it's just going to just restart everything from the, the start. So it's just like an easy way to go back and restart it always turns the solo on if you you know if you need to switch that back over see to see it better you can do that and turn goes down or whatever you want so there's a difference into uh, the reason why I, I put this button here to restart it because it's like uh, easy access to restart without having to load it up or whatever and what I like about this uh, this one right here the, the delete all history here is for some reason if I decide to uh, Increase the geometry before I start. All right, and I press the uh, delete history. It's going to start and it's going to store that subdivision level. So if I press here, all right, then we're going to get this. Then when I press morph here, it's going to do something like this. Then I press restart. It's always going to have the subdivision levels. All right. I don't know if that made sense to you, but I'll kind of explain it in a different way. Let's say I subdivided this. I'll control D that. And I morph this. And we'll wait a few seconds. And you can keep an eye on this uh, active point here. Now, if I press restart, um, it's going to lose all the first subdivision levels that I'm going to have to subdivide it again. See, it's at 482. And I'm having to restart. So if I want my starting point to be, I'm going to control D that. Or, yeah, control D that. And increase my polygon counts. If I want that to be my starting point, I will press this one here, delete, undo history. So now this is my starting point. So anytime I restart it, I will always have my um, subdivisions right here. Uh, here's another thing that you can do with the uh, morph here. I'll switch this here. So you can see I got the cylinder and then we got the pyramid. I'm going to go ahead and hide part of this. Just going to mask that. And we'll bring the mask. Now we can, you can see the center of it's not masked and when we use the morph slider it will try going into the cylinder. Do 
that. Let's invert the mask and try that again. Uh, here's another thing that you can do. Um, as you can see, we have two objects here. We can um, actually uh, bring in a third one if we want to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press insert. That one's going to put it below the cylinder, so we'll press insert instead of a pen. And we'll use the ring here. As you can see, the ring is still on the inside and not on the outside because we want the cylinder larger. So we'll go ahead and press that here. give it a few seconds and we get something like that sometimes we need to press it more than once and we get something like this and like I said sometimes if you keep on pressing this button you get different effects then you'll notice after a while it could start messing up that's why I kind of scroll through my history by just clicking and dragging through here Okay, we're going to go over these next two sliders here. Um, before I do, uh, this first button here is kind of like it does it automatically, kind of self-adjustment, um, but it might not be perfect. Sometimes you might need to uh, handle it yourself with a slider. And basically what these sliders do is once I move this slider, it's going to set the distance. Uh, that's the distance over here. If you open a pellet, you can see it. So when I start dragging this slider to the right, let's say it stops at, my slider stops at 002, and when I let go, it's going to start from 002, then start climbing up. Wherever I let go of this slider, it's going to move it over here, then it's going to increase over here. Now these both sliders are pretty close to the same. This one sets it slower, and this one sets it faster. What I mean about this, um, this one here on the right is more aggressive. It will do it um, in large increment amounts. So in other words, um, this first slider here, it does it slower. So this means that I can kind of move the slider quite a bit because it does it slower. So I can move it quite a bit to the right. And since this the second one is so sensitive, you got to be very careful. You might not want to move it very much and because it, it will do it very quickly so this is experiment so when I move the slider I want you to keep an eye on this distance here so I'm gonna drag it I'm gonna try eyeballing this here it says one 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 I'm gonna let go and look over the distance on the right and I'm gonna let go and see if it starts off from there well pretty close and let go well, see, it wasn't aggressive enough because it didn't take shape. Um, we can try it again or we can press restart. All right, like I said, this one here, you might want to move it quite a bit. I'll move it halfway up. It looks like something 51, 8 by 1, something like that. And you can see it working there. As you can see, it kept on, after it bonded to its shape, it kept on doing it more and more and more. Um, a little bit longer than I, I wanted it to because just to show you something it will screw it up if you do it too much so restart it so we got to adjust this and halfway was a little bit too much so we can kind of tone it down here and once it gets to its shape you really want to wait to see if the script is going to stop well it it stopped before it took its shape I mean we could do it again and press restart um, and we'll just try that again something you're going to have to experiment with See, it's kind of overdoing it. That's not too bad, so we'll leave it like that. All right, this one here, like I said, uh, all you got to do is just move it just a little bit, and it'll start bonding to it. All right, I did it very little, and it's taking quite a bit of shape right there. So let's go ahead and restart this. And if I overdo it, it's probably just going to screw up. It might, it might not know. 
See, it already took a shape and it's still running the strip. Really don't want it that it's overdoing it. Uh, another thing is about the undos here, you can still scroll back, even if it goes too far, and find out the spot that you want to keep, where you think it might be the best. And see it if you look at the top, you know, it's kind of messed up in the mesh. And you can just kind of find a point right there where you want to stop at. So overdoing it, you know, you can still go back to the undoes. All right, we're going to go down to this uh, Morph Auto here. Uh, it's kind of in combination with a couple of these buttons down here. Um, like I said, it always has to do with distance. It really depends where your distance at. So if you're over here messing with something, um, your distance will change. All right, then you come over here and press this. This is going to be based on what the distance already set at. So if it's already set over here, I mean, you can manually slide, use a slider here then use this. Now this uh, will actually project it quite a few times. And uh, that one actually worked out perfect. All right, so we're going to restart this, and uh, for some reason that this is set and you don't know where it's at, and you were selecting some buttons up here, um, it's going to have effect. That's why we got, uh, we're going to skip this five times right now, so if we set it at zero, all right, it's going to start at zero distance, and it's going to work its way up in increments. So if I go to morph auto, it's going to morph auto, and it's going to climb up. Well, that's not working, all right? Let's go ahead and press restart. And let's increase this by 25% and take a look here. Press Morph Auto. As you can see, we're at, uh, it's about 25%. It's fairly accurate. Not perfect, but it's, you know, I kind of self-adjusted. Something you're gonna have to experiment and say, well, that's not working there. I mean, I could pre press the button again to see if anything's gonna happen. Um, you can see just nothing is happening right here. So restart. I'm, I can already tell by the first two here it needs more distance. So let's do 75% and do the morph auto. Then we get something like this and that's kind of what I wanted. So this is kind of a little bit more control. Now this button here on the morph auto, I'm not sure but I think it does it like 16 times or somewhere around there that it hits the project button. Sometimes that is way too much. That's why I got the five times here. So let's press restart. And we'll do this at 75%. Now, when I press 75%, before I press five times, and I go up, you can see the distance going up. And it's moving it past 75%. So if I press it again, um, we're not getting 75% anymore. So keep that in mind. So if you want it 75% each time, you need to come back here and press 75% start so let's go over to five times here because it won't do it like 16 times here so if I do it 75% at five times it's going to project with the project button at five times at 75% this way it's uh, you don't have to sit here and wait uh, you can see it went up a little bit okay uh, I can press restart or I can press five times again and just sit here and do a little bit more control and sometimes you get a lot better results this is kind of an option um, for a little bit more control rather than some of these buttons and sliders on the top. Alright, I'm going to do another one here. Uh, let's turn on uh, Soul here. I'm going to take this head here and um, I'm going to uh, morph it to this head here. Um, if you notice on this one here, um, I have it masked because uh, when it starts morphing, it'll actually start shrinking the mesh. So I want two masks to, and protect the area. So just the head of it gets morphed to it. As you can see that the main one is uh, larger than the one below it. So I'm going to keep that in mind here. And I'm going to be going over this relax here. So let's do 75% at five times. And that does not look good. All right. Some of these buttons um, you'll have to experiment. Like I said, let's press restart. Let's try this one here. Let's see what we get here. Um, 
when it's done you might want to turn on the wireframe that way you can kind of see what's going on here so you can see it's kind of messy here not bad um, what you can do is uh, you can uh, relax the mesh we'll, we'll kind of bloat it a little bit and uh, I want to go ahead and project this uh, it's kind of sort of took the shape a little bit um, so I don't want to project it a bunch so I'll just do it five times let's try 50% frame and that's not too bad um, we can keep on doing that and see what happens let's go ahead and relax that a little bit let's try 75 percent five times nope try it zero percent and we'll, we'll work our way up well actually I'm gonna restart this and try this again we're gonna go ahead and start at zero percent um, this is gonna be a little bit more controlling because I'm gonna start at the bottom and I work my way up and without overdoing it so I'm gonna leave it at zero percent and start climbing up on the distance all right so that's getting close but not quite and you can see the distance went up a little bit and I'm gonna leave everything at default and just press it again it'll eventually start taking shape press it again and press it again and we get something like that now we can go ahead and uh, relax this all right and let's do this back at zero percent and work our way back up again Okay, it's not too bad. I will just leave it like that. And since it's morphed, let's turn off the polyframes here. Turn the draw size a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and go open the morph palette. And we'll switch this. And you can see we got our two different heads. Okay, really don't care for the ears on this one, so I'll morph them to this one here. So we'll just like drag right here. Uh, we can change the uh, lips if we want to. Um, the eyes. And the nose. And we can get something like that. Now we switch it. We'll switch back to here to here. So I switch here. And start morphing. It'll go back to the... Uh, one that I already started morphing to. Oh, just something you gotta kind of experiment with. Like I said, we can always go through here and kind of mess with it. There's one little note before I go here, and uh, what happens is when you uh, project this, and we'll turn on the polyframes, is and we'll turn on solo. Um, you can see where these little red dots are. These are the vertices. All right, these vertices on this head snap to the vertices on this head. So if uh, you your polygons are stretched out and uneven, probably not going to work very well. Um, a good way to get around that is go ahead and see remesh this or dynamesh it, whatever it takes to kind of even these polygons out so they can snap to each other. Uh, another thing is uh, I don't check my inbox very much at my um, YouTube channel and sometimes I just don't check anything period and I might not re reply. It's not that I stuck up, it's just uh, got a lot of the stuff I'm doing but uh, uh, this is should about wrap it up and I hope you enjoyed it and the link will be below the video and you can try the script there will be a text script and if you want to edit it yep, you're more than welcome to thank you very much
very much.